Ohio. So I don't have a partner, so I'm not having sex. My libido is MIA. Sex hurts. It takes too long. Where's my orgasm? He can't and or I won't. After 22 years, the thrill is gone. So for those of you sitting here and those of you out there, does this sound like some of the conversations that you and your girlfriends have been having uh, lately about your own sex lives? I'm not owning up to any of those things. I was just using those examples. <laughs> So hi, and welcome to another meaningful conversation presented by the Living Healthy List. And today our year of radiant resilience continues with this month's discussion, Resilient Sex and Sensuality. So I'm Lori Bryant Woolridge. I'm going to be your moderator today. And I am a love relationship and feminine confidence coach. So I've written several books, including The Power of Wow, A Guide to Unleashing the Confident Sexy You, and weapons of mass seduction. And I've been coaching women for over 15 years on how to feel comfortable in their own skin, how to grow their feminine confidence, and how to unearth their own brand of sexy, um, all wrapped up in the love that they have for themselves. And of course, because I'm a certified spiritual coach, it's all done through the spiritual gaze. So whether you're here trying to get your sexy back uh, after a long-term relationship or marriage, or you're single and want to get out there and mingle again, or you just are so confused about what sex looks like in your life, we're here for, with some food for thought on how to make that vital mind-body-soul connection that's going to help you breathe new energy into your love life and prove to yourself that great sex never gets old. So, if you're ready, joining me today are two of my favorite Living Healthy List coach, uh, experts and coaches, Dr. Sheila Craig Whiteman and the beautiful Lisa Medley. So, Sheila, can you tell everyone what you do and who you are and uh, how you work with people? I sure do. Yes, um, and thank you for uh, the intro. Thank you for, I'm very happy to be doing this talk today. Uh, this is one of the things that I talk about quite a bit um, to different audiences because uh, this topic is, is really important and I'll get back to my intro, but it's just, it's just very important to me. However, let me talk about me. So I am a pelvic health physical therapist and a health coach. Um, and I have pivoted from working in the clinic, um, helping women uh, with all types of problems uh, in the pelvic region um, to doing it uh, as a coach because I feel I can reach more people. I do have a signature program. So I really work right now with women to reduce and eliminate their bladder leaks. And then when I do talks on menopause and helping to navigate through that particular area or time in life that we all um, will be fortunate to go through. Uh, in addition, I have written books also. I've written two books on bladder leaks. So just don't ask me about the bladder leak situation, but I just love talking about bladder leaks. So we don't want to have bladder leaks. We're just going to keep, you know, going after that until there are, there are no more. Like everybody is just cured from bladder leaks. So that is uh, basically what I do who I am. Um, and like I said, I do have a coaching program that specifically works with women uh, to reduce and eliminate bladder leaks. Thank Thanks. you. Mm -hmm. um, and in um, full disclosure, Sheila and I have done quite a few uh, workshops on um, 50 is the new 30 and how to um, embrace and love your body as it is and keep your sexy life going. So I'm excited that she's joining us here today. And I think you guys are going to be excited too. And Lisa, um, can you introduce yourself and tell everybody about the amazing work that you do? Thank you. Thank you, Lori. And thank you for the, this opportunity to have this meaningful conversation. Um, this is definitely one of these to just bring out of the closet, open some air, breathe some new air, some new life in, and just have a sacred space. So really grateful to, to be here for that. So I'm about 
embodiment. Um, and what does that mean? It means being aware of how you are and specifically body awareness. And I'm a body geek. I've been studying the body for, oh, decades. <laughs> started with massage school that I found in the yellow pages because the internet didn't really exist yet. And really from that time, I just started to be literally in awe of how the body is made, how it's designed, how it is actually part of the natural world and not the mechanical world, contrary to cultural conditioning. And the sensuality that we'll certainly um, get into is just, it's part of our birthright. We're supposed to feel alive. We're supposed to feel vital. We're supposed to feel comfortable in our own skin. And frankly, we just have thousands of years of um, programming that tells us otherwise, but it's not true. And hopefully we'll debunk some myths here in sex, sensuality, um, all kinds of areas. So I really specialize in helping people get back together with their body, really cultivating a relationship, a kind, respectful relationship. So you really remember that your body is your vessel, your sacred vessel, your, your, the voice of your soul, your essence, and it's here to support you. And we need to show up for it as much. And I specialize in highly sensitives, energy sensitives, empaths, um, because I teach what I wanna learn and I wanna feel comfortable in my own skin in this really overstimulating world. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not only aware, I'm like hyper aware. <laughs> so I have a lot of tools in my toolbox of just how to feel grounded and calm and really relaxed in your body. And I'll certainly expand on that. Thanks Fantastic. Me. Oh, my pleasure. And you know what? I um, I was the one who emailed you and said, please be on this panel because body awareness, being comfortable in your body is part, such a huge part of how we feel and about our own sexuality and so I don't think you guys could have a better panel today to help you tackle being sexy and resilient in your sexiness and sensuality from the inside out. So between our body, our mind, and our soul, we're going to hook you up and you are going to um, walk away feeling, you know what, the best isn't behind me. The best is yet to come. So since we are now all friends and experts, um, let's get this conversation started. And I think one of a uh, great place to start is with a little bit of sex re-education. And I say that because generally we are women of a certain age who have a lot of experience now, a lifetime of experience with sex. But I would argue, and I make this argument based on all those years of coaching women and conversations, with um, just friends uh, and people that we don't have, we have experience, but not so much wisdom, real insightful understanding about our bodies, especially as they are now, and our emotions, especially as they relate to the way our bodies and our lives are now, and who we are becoming as sexual partners especially in this time in our life. So we want to give you off the top some wisdom to start your sex re-education to make sure that your sex life is as resilient and lovely and luscious and juicy and delicious as possible. So what is, what little bit of wisdom, what is that little soundbite that you can put on a post-it? Because I almost, almost, I am always saying, put it on a post-it and stick it on a wall. <laughs> So what is that bit of information that's going to help us roll with the realities of sex and aging? So Sheila, do you want to go first? Uh, yes, mine is uh, sex, sex and sexuality is lifelong. That will fit on a post-it. <laughs> right. Sex and sexuality is lifelong. That is an amazing thing because how many of us think that our our sex life has a shelf life. 
based on what our body's doing. So we're going to get more into that in just a moment. Lisa, what is your um, post-it note? Yes, my wisdom post-it is remember to really relax. Lovely. That's like so important. I can't wait to hear more about that. And mine is actually about your need. To, okay, let's see if we make sure it fits on a post-it because I talk and write long. Creatively redefine your sex life. All right. So that's my um, little bit of wisdom. So let's go back and just investigate those a little bit more. Sheila, sex and sexuality is a life is lifelong. What do what do we know about that? We know that um, our bodies are made to enjoy sex. They're made um, for sex for that pleasure um, as a component of our life, um, and Sometimes, many times, uh, physicality as we age uh, makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, and even these days, finding the right person, uh, because um, just the challenges of the world today with even getting out and, and being with someone personally, even to get to know them, um, has uh, really changed the perspective, I think, for a lot of mostly women, I'll say, but men are starting to catch up with us actually on the uh, celibacy issue. But for women, we tend to feel as our bodies are changing, as we become less flexible, as our, um, our we have more, uh, physical issues, say, for example, vaginal dryness, or um, even decreased libido. And a lot of these are hormonal related. Um, some of them are mental also. But um, we begin to decrease either the amount of sex that we have, give it up altogether. Um, and I really want women, and I'll say men because it's people in general because it's really our bodies as humans but I really think that um, we should all look at sex and sexuality they they are related but not quite um, the same you can use them interchangeably their differences but I do feel that we should look at it as something to enjoy throughout our days there is not a shelf life that um, having that being sexual or being a sexual being uh, means. There, there is no stop to that. Yeah, that's a really important point. And we're gonna definitely, as we get into some of the questions that were sent to us, we're gonna be expanded on that point uh, more. So thank you. Lisa, um, what about, uh, how would you like to expand your, your wisdom yeah, so I put really relax on purpose. That's really intentional. Um, I found in my informal polls, you know, just the concept of relax, just the word relax. It's often, not always, like I don't have time, I can't do it. Um, it's it's a very it has a very interesting energy around like that word. I personally and and in my work use restore. Um, really learning how to restore what essentially what I'm talking about is nervous system regulation. And so what do I mean by that? Our nervous system is the is one of the systems or the main system that interfaces between the outside and the inside world. We all know what stress feels like when we're stressed, when we're in that stress response, which is normal and human and we need it. In our culture, you can just look around. We, we generally broad brush strokes are often in chronic stress and we are chronically, you know, fighting saber toothed tigers, you know, and being in that tense mode. So what happens in that body level, and you can just feel that right now, if you've had something that, you know, set you off already today, our muscles tense, our breathing becomes more shallow. We, you know, our, 
um, our heart rate increases, we're, we're in, you know, this part of our brain, our, our reptilian brain, our limbic system of like, am I okay? Am I okay? I mean, the bottom line message is, am I safe? Is it okay to be in this moment? And so imagine being in that energy. And if you're not having practices to help release and shift your physiology, shift your nervous system, just for yourself, first and foremost, and then being present with a partner, you know, if you're in your head and you're like this, it's just not going to be as enjoyable. You know, you're going to be stressed out, which is <laughs> not the point. As Sheila said, we're, we're here for pleasure. We're designed for that. So really being intentionally um, of, you know, what, what state of stress ease are you in? Um, you know, before, I mean, sometimes things happen on the fly, but like, what is that, that place in you um, that you can just tap into just to soften? I personally, and here's just a concrete tip. I find myself, um, the more aware I become is tensing my muscles, like for no reason, <laughs> you know, like I'm just in that mode, even when I'm washing dishes or just, you know, it's just that habitual thing, right? We're, we're living life and certainly as women, there's a lot of moving pieces. We're on so much. So for me personally, it's just softening my muscles. I just feel, of, I just imagine, you know, like sunlight or, um, you know, satin or like holding a, a, a baby or a feather, you know, just that like softening. And I tell you that will help you really relax or just bring it down a couple of notches and be more present for yourself first. Wow. Good advice. Because, you know, and I think one of the things that resonates me with me the most when you say relax is the idea that because our bodies are not the same as they were, because they're not functioning the way we're, they did, and because the pursuit of pleasure now becomes a lot more work, it seems, because we're trying to achieve pleasure in the same ways. Um, Relaxing is a key part to that because that whole stressed out, oh, am I going to have an orgasm? Oh, I'm taking too long. Oh, all that kind of stuff. So I think that's a really a, a key point. And we'll get into that more. So I would say that mine is create, creatively redefine sex for yourself. And I creative is an important word within this bit of wisdom because creative resilience is our capacity to generate positive solutions and reimagine our environment and shift our perspective to discover new possibilities. And so there is no other area in your life that requires more consistent resiliency than your love life, your sex life. It is continuously affected by aging, familiarity, illness, medications, emotions, you know, water weight, all that kind of good stuff. And because we tend to approach sex solely from the physical vantage point, as our bodies do what they are supposed to do, which is decline, we accept that our physical, I mean, our sex life has to decline as well, which ties into Sheila's point about it's a lifelong thing. And to Lisa's point, just relax and we'll, you got it. So it doesn't really have to be like this. Our, and this is important for you to understand too, because that creative energy is also the same as your sexual energy. Our sex lives ebb and flow because our sexual energy ebbs and flows. Your sexual energy is your soul's energy used to create. Create anything, not just art, not just babies. So sexual energy and creative energy is the same. They come from the same place in your body, the same energy center, your sacral chakra. So creatively redefining what constitutes sex for you and your partner changes the whole game in your sex life. It's the creativity you need to keep your love life fresh and juicy and intimate. It's leading with the sexual energy, the creative energy, instead of the physical proudness. So when you do that, you can redefine sex for yourself. And then sex becomes, it's not just the pursuit of orgasm and physical pleasure, 
but it becomes more of a soul satisfying and an intimate experience that also includes physical pleasure. So we'll get into that a little bit more, but definitely use your creative energy to redefine sex for yourself. So anybody have any questions about what you just heard? from the three of us that you want a little bit more explanation on. If not, we are going to move on. We um, have some questions that we went around prior to this to ask people to send us about um, what their thoughts about sex, um, being resilient in your sex life. And some clients have asked us, and so we're gonna just use that to be kick off and give you more information. And if at any time you have a question, please use your little reaction button to raise that little yellow alien hand and let us know and we will uh, include you. So first of all, um, Sheila, you know, lifelong pursuit, lifelong gift, lifelong uh, source of pleasure. But how and why is staying sexually active part of an overall healthy uh, lifestyle? So um, sex has many um, great physical benefits. It actually does. Um, it's a stress reliever. It, you, are, you do get exercise. You know, it's not like you're going out for a run, but you do get exercise. And it really um, keeps your vaginal area, uh, I would even say more alive. I really would. When, and I'll, I'll, and I'll just um, say this as an aside, you can kind of take it. But so in the, when I'm in the clinic or when I was in the clinic and when we treat, we actually, um, for most people uh, to really find out what's going on, you, have to take a glove finger and you, you know, kind of put it in the vagina. You can see what's going on there. When we do a history, we find we, the history includes sexual activity, you know, and even in conversation, you, you get to really talk about sexual life. The women who remain sexually active, and I'm talking about all the way up to uh, almost 80, <laughs> this is, might sound funny to you, but their vaginas really felt, they really felt like they were tight and they were really healthy. And then when you look at um, someone, even women in their 30s and 40s, um, doing the same exam, um, you can feel the difference. So just by, just from that, I know that um, because it's, evidence for me this is evidentially based for me for putting my you know doing this with hundreds of women because it's really hundreds I did it over um you know 10 years five days a week what eight people a day it's a lot of people so um you you for me I know that um remaining sexually active and I'll, I'll back up because your sexual activity you just have you know simulation with your um, vaginal region. Okay, so it could be with a person, it could be without a person. There's plenty of things out there. But um, from that, I know how important it is um, to really, for your vaginal health, for your mental health. I would even say for your physical health. It's not, if you don't have it, it's not detrimental. Don't get me wrong. It's not that you will be sickly or, or anything like that, but we are looking at enhanced, yeah. enhanced life and the, the, or, or maximal living. Yeah. So that should be put in with everything else, your exercise, your drinking, your water, your, you know, everything else that you say, okay, well, I'm doing this so that I can be healthy going forward, live my best life, have my best attitude. Yeah. I just want that to be included. And you know, it's really important. A fun fact that Dr. Sheila um, told me when we were going, doing one of the workshops that I'm just going to remind her of is that um, staying sexually active not only um, lowers your blood pressure and your risk of heart attack, 
but dementia. It helps um, lower your risk of dementia. And also you forgot to remember, remind them of this about incontinence and what saying active sexually does. Yeah, I was going to circle back to that because then we're talking about strength. We're talking about bladder leaks. We're talking about, I figured it probably would be a question um, going forward on that. But yeah, they're um, just the, the contraction, you know, of an orgasm. Um, is so beneficial uh, to control, to just your the way your, your body functions, to the ability of your organs, listen, to the ability of your organs to stay in place, right? Because when you have an orgasm, that is a full contraction. So that is a contraction of those three layers. And I don't, because I can go on and I'm not going to, because I know Lisa, you got to get up in here and look, <laughs> but... Um, you know, there's there's that three layers of muscles that um, are at the base of your pelvic floor. Most of us will stimulate that layer one. Layer two is your sphincter. So, you know, they're going to close if they're strong enough. That layer three, to catch that, if you don't have good strength, but you still have orgasms, you're going to, it's going to exercise. You're going to, it's going to help with your prolapse. If you have any prolapses, if you had any kids, you know, they do drag your organs yeah. down when they come out. So yeah, there is a lot of benefits to um, really just uh, uh, having an orgasm, number one. But having an orgasm, even in the um, in the context of having it along with someone who you care about or who you love, is even um, adds that mental um, and just uh, healthy component. Yeah. So, and I think it's important, right, when we talk about great and resilient sex when we talk about the mind-body-soul connection, that um, we tend to isolate sex as something different, something that we do, that, and not part of, and sex to have babies, right? But not part of our overall healthy lifestyle. So, so Lisa, what is the difference between sexuality and sensuality? And why is that important for people to know when it comes to a resilient sex life? Hmm. So what makes sense to me is, you know, and just like listen through your lens and what resonates is that sensuality, I mean, if we just break that word down, senses, right? We have five, well, physical senses. We have intuition and perhaps some other subtle energy senses. And, you know, just imagine, hmm, imagine one of your favorite foods and tasting it and like really taste it. Like for me, if I had like organic strawberries, I'm all over or organic peaches right now it's August. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's just, they're heavenly to me. So that is engaging your creativity, that life force energy, your chi, shakta, prana, you know, whatever, you know, so many names for that same thing and making that connection of I'm experiencing pleasure. This feels good to me, or this tastes good to me, or this sounds good to me, or whatever other senses are. And that, you just get to have that, like you're here for that in this human physical divine vessel, like that's part of why we're here is to be able to experience life in all of its flavors, in all of its challenges and successes and pleasures and pains. You know, we, we do have all of that. And when we're talking about sensuality, that, I mean, just as a starting place is you just get to have that on your own. <laughs> Anytime, anytime you want. And you're, you don't need a partner. You don't need to have a partner to have sex either necessarily. And right in our culture, we usually, it's usually, you know, how we think about it or how we've been educated about it. And that's why we're here redefining it creatively. That having access to that and, and using that as a, as a way just to experience yourself in a sensual way, as a sensual being, um, especially people have, um, we all have different experiences with sex and sexuality. 
our body. You know, sometimes there's just a lot um, of history of pain in between you having this amazing lifelong sex life, right? There's a lot of, um, it's a journey. So wherever you are on that journey, just experiencing your sensuality um, and just tuning in to what feels good to me, what feels pleasure, pleasurable, you know, what's, what's something beautiful. If you're not sure, beauty is, is, a, is a way to focus you. You know, what is, what is beautiful to me? Um, I mean, taste, well, I guess, you know, peaches can be beautiful. I'm really after it for the taste of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that, that's how I make a distinction. And for, you know, for me personally and professionally, it's, it's, um, I find it, there's some spaciousness around it. Just like, you know, if you're in that, you know, it's like some of the questions and the statements you were saying earlier, Lori, of just, you know, well, what if I'm not with a partner or, you know, um, what if I, you know, just things, things that we're debunking here, yeah. you know, is that you can just start with yourself and your own just sensual beingness and your sensual expression um and that can you can just turn yourself on just with that totally and and you know five senses is way you make your world interactive otherwise you're just moving through it and when it comes to sex too just to piggyback on what you're saying it keeps you in the moment how often are you you know getting revved up or whatever and you're thinking about other stuff and so when you can concentrate on those five senses and bring them into the room with you and into the moment with you, that body awareness that, you know, Lisa, you talk about so much, your ability to relax, um, all that, and just enjoy the journey instead of perform the act. And the other thing I would say is your five senses are a way to kick up your sex life in a way um, to bring new tricks to the table and all that stuff if you don't want to get into um you know depending on what your sensibilities are you can use your five senses to help rev things up in ways like oh you want rough sex okay let's have sex on a sisal rug <laughs> you know what i mean not a big deal but it's that the the roughness the texture introducing something like that into your body sees that as something different and exciting because it's not gentle and soft or whatever your five senses are can become a huge um you know sexual toy so to speak um to get you out there and so i'm going to stay on this this uh note that we have about you don't need a partner to have sex you know um one of the questions that came in was that i've been celibate since the pandemic i feel like i'm losing my interest in sex how do I get it back when I don't have a partner? So again, Sheila, you touched on a how important sex is to a celibate body, but what are some of the ways that um, solo sex, how can it look in a way that is not only physically um, satisfying, and, and Lisa, you could maybe look at how it can be emotionally and mentally and spiritually satisfying. So, um, you want to start with you, Sheila? Sure. Um, well, one of the, the things that you uh, do have to think about is there does have to be um, a, a work up to an emotional component, I'll put it that way, for loving yourself. Um, because it does take, if you have lost libido, or if um, it's just something that uh, for some women, they just haven't, even, they never really had it, actually. But if it's something that you really want to work on, you have to really start out. It's, it's almost a, a start out with a mindset. You do have to start out with a mindset. Um, and then you have to really um, be gentle with yourself and with your thoughts. Um, because uh, there are things that you can do, you know, and they involve you touching your body, touching, you, you know, the areas that are that you can you can stimulate almost any area almost in your body, really, but um, to, to stimulate those areas and and not be frustrated if it doesn't um, if it's not miraculous, like, OK, well, I, you know, have touched myself for a weekend. OK, well, I'm still the same. Um, it Because it will take time. You have to be patient. You have to 
um, be open. And you have to realize that too, what you're working up to, because it, it doesn't always have to be actual intercourse. Um, there are other ways that um, are sexually satisfying that can lead to intercourse if that's really what you know the ultimate goal is. It does not ever have to be, really, um, because there are so many um, different ways that you can make sure that your body receives pleasure and um, ultimately orgasm if that is, you know, is, if that is a goal, which since we talked about all the benefits of orgasm, I'll just say that should be the goal. <laughs> just, just, just not that, you know, but you can work your way up to that. Um, and, and some of the ways that you can do it, I, you know, I kind of touched on that, but um, a lot of it is the power of touch and the power of touch um, with yourself with a partner, small bits, you know, because it's almost like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to reintroduce this to myself, but also to um, change expectation. Um, so um, don't get caught up in, um, okay, well, I'm touching myself here and I don't feel any, I have to feel something. I, I have to. Um, no, you um, find you explore your body, find out what works for you. And then, um, and this is easier to say, to say than said than done, I guess. But it's almost like, and then don't take it so seriously. You know, just don't take it so seriously. Yeah. Give yourself that, um, that pass that um, it will work out. You have confidence, it, it, it will work for you. Uh, but it's going to take time. And I think that don't take it seriously is huge mm -hmm. when it comes from whether it's sex, you're sexing and loving yourself or with a partner. Yeah. It's, it's become so daggone serious that it becomes, it's now, it's performative. That's all it is. And when you introduce fun back into your sex life, whether it's your own with yourself or with other, your partner, it's a way to bring back more intimacy, bring back more vulnerability, bring back. So you know what? Maybe the duct taping ourselves to the wall and introducing lollipops into the thing didn't work out, but that brings the joy and the laughter like, okay. Um, and it makes you more spontaneous and wanting to try instead of it having to be that I have to pleasure you. You have to pleasure me. We have to walk out of here feeling like, you know, mm -hmm. we just did a porn movie. So that's a, an excellent. Right. Well, that goes to the, um, uh, the thought of that sex never, you never outgrow. Exactly. Your body's going to change. So the things that you might have done in your 20s and 30s, even 40s. Um, but it, it actually, from your, from your 30s on, it just kind of <laughs> gradually... I don't want to say changes. I'll just say changes. Uh, but yeah, if you don't have that attitude where it is not so serious because things are going to happen, legs going to cramp up, can't, you know, hold it in a position, you know, whatever with the man, uh, it can be uncomfortable at times if, you know, you haven't really prepped up. Um, yeah. So these, all of these things, um, they're going to happen. So take it as it comes and just adjust. Yeah. So Lisa, um, I want to move on because we're moving so quickly. Time is just not going. So I, another question, I'm 50 plus and I've gained weight. I'm not comfortable in my body anymore. I don't feel sexy. That's a place where we've all been because women, no matter what our size, we've been conditioned to believe that our sex appeal is based on our dress size. So, um, Lisa, what can you tell everyone about, you know, as a body relationship coach, um, what tips might you have for them as our bodies change, as they will, as we gain weight, sometimes it's medication, sometimes it's, you know, nachos. Um, what is it that we can do to, to keep a healthy relationship with our body? Mm. Yeah, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. 
Well, you know, my, my first in, uh, impulse is like, put down the magazines. Just put down the magazines. Um, you know, as far as that brainwashing, right? You know, of just those associations, you know, because the reality, you know, from, from, you know, if I were to be the voice of your body, like your body is giving you information as to what's happening. It's just sharing what is happening based on how you are fueling it, nourishing it, depleting it, because it's a two-way conversation, right? It's a two-way connection. So I like to just make things really neutral as far as like, it's all energy, you know? So if you have extra energy in the middle part of your body um, or wherever, wherever it is, it, your body is, is giving you information. It's giving you um, feedback about how energy is moving or not. That's one way to kind of just look at that. And certainly as, you know, the, the, the weight piece, I mean, I know this is like so big. Um, the other thing I'll just mention in here is around the really relaxing, the restoring, the nervous system regulation. Um, you know, one thing that happens is when we're in chronic stress and when we're judging ourselves and comparing ourselves either to the version of ourselves, you know, a decade or two ago, just that, and never mind the culture that is like mm -hmm. off the wall. Like it's either so over sexualized or completely closeted. You know, that's why I love these conversations and spaces because there's so much that happens in between that's called real life, you know. Um, that it can just get, it can just get through so confusing and overwhelming. So just start with yourself. Um, you know, one really simple practice I invite people in and you can try this yourself is just imagine your body is sitting next to you or across from you, or maybe it's across the room and just hi, just acknowledge its presence and whatever is being expressed is is that's what it is. It's just talking to you. It's talking to you. It's giving information. Um, it's very much like a little kid, you know, it's just like stating, it's just stating. It's not judging you. We've been taught to judge it, or we've been taught to think, oh, my body's letting me down or what's wrong with me or all that BS. It's all learned behaviors. It's learned thoughts. Um, you know, as Sheila said that, you know, the mindset shift um, is super important. And with acknowledgement, with kindness, with compassion, if you can get to that. But even if, even if it's just acknowledging like this is my body currently, this is what is currently true. This is how energy is being expressed through my physicality right now. And as we know, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, it just changes form. We are so transformational. So wherever you are, just even acknowledging that. And that might even be a stretch for people as well. Um, and one thing I wanna say, is this is super important, it's related and, and not, is breath. Breathing, um, you know, just to kind of couple that with what Sheila was saying around just, you know, touching yourself, getting to know your body, just like you have it, it's here. And in the kind, compassionate, even just acknowledgement ways. And your breath is, is, is what moves the energy around. I mean, that's part of what moves it around. And um, certainly if you get caught up in that, like, you know, well, I'm not feeling anything or what's happening, you know, you're in your head. So you know, get back into your body. Your breath is a really powerful anchor. Um, and even like, what is one part of your body that you appreciate? For me, is an opposable thumb. Like, imagine if we didn't have an opposable thumb. Life would be very different, you know, like something neutral on your body that you can appreciate and just start to have that emotional connection to of like, wow, like I can open a door, I can turn a key, you know. Um, that's another place to, to start and connect. And I, I think. One of the things that you said that really popped out to me is the energy. We are energy. 
and it's the energy, you know, when I get downloads from the angels and all that, one of the things that they said around um, sex, I asked them, what is sexy? And their message was sexy is positive energy in motion. It doesn't matter how big your boobs are, how low they're hanging to the ground, all of that. Positive energy in motion. Everybody's sexy when they're kind, when they're compassionate, when they're loving, when they're taking themselves seriously as a deserving soul in this human body. So, and that, again, we're making that mind, body, soul connection of Sheila's mindset and what's going on with your body physically, um, with Lisa and the body and the mind and in the soul. I, we have one last question before we're gonna give everybody a chance to do their tips. And um, this was a hard one. And I decided since I had the question, I was gonna answer it because is when you, you're going to say, thank you, Lori. <laughs> so how do you revive a sexless marriage? How do you make, you know, bad sex better? I've been married for 28 years. I haven't, we haven't had sex in seven years. My husband has ED and I miss that connection with him. So again, because I knew the question, I had to time to think, I didn't want to <laughs> throw this on you, but I think it's an important question to ask. So I'm going to begin to answer it. And if you guys have anything to kick in, let me know. So one, if you're looking to revitalize your sex life, just on the, the easy tip, start kissing again. Um, one of the issues that comes with a sexless marriage is the loss of intimacy. And so the first thing I would say is to bring back the kiss. It's the way we begin our journey into sex and it's the first thing we kind of throw away once we find uh, orgasm because kiss, 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 let's go, <laughs> right? So um, kissing allows you to maintain as you redefine your sex life from year to year, decade to decade, you will always have an intimate, vulnerable, juicy sex life if you keep the kissing alive and it keeps that connection but from a soul and spiritual perspective i want to add that this is a perfect time to introduce a bit of divine intent because we rarely look at sex from a spiritual gaze again we're always looking at it from the physical um, vantage point so tantric sex is maybe something that you all might be looking for, especially as we age and go on. So tantric sex has this kind of connotation of being freaky cult, you know, in a tent, just doing it for hours, blah, 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 blah. But it really isn't. It is the sacred sex, the spiritual part of sex, of sex. In a nutshell, tantra means woven together. Think of sex woven together. Its focus is both spiritual and physical intimacy, not just physical pleasure, but spiritual meaning connection above and connection with intimates with your partner. Foreplay is the most central aspect of tantric sex and orgasm is not the end goal. So as we are aging and our bodies are doing what they're designed to do, how many of you are complaining? It takes so long to get to that point. You know, it, it is built for the way our bodies are and it is all by divine intent. And because both partners explore their masculine and feminine sides in tantric sex, the traditional roles of sex play are gone. So for a male who has ED and cannot continue that performance um part of performative sex this allows him to tap into this feminine energy that feminine side of receiving of enjoying of of you know all that nurturing compassion all the stuff that we bring to it with the feminine energy and for the female it allows her to explore the masculine energy of conquering and getting out there and being on the hunt and doing what our partners have complained about for years when are you going to initiate sex? <laughs> you never initiate it. I always got to come to you. So it really is, again, um, 
allowing us to keep up and maintain that lifelong enjoyment of sex by connecting our bodies as they are, not the way they used to be, not the way we wish them to be, but recognizes the changes that are going on and allowing us to do the work we need to do, whether it's to keep ourselves juicy and open and available, to relax and be part of the, the move and through our senses, be part of the moment and be connected through spirit, through the idea of tantric sex that is meant to promote intimacy and joy. So, as I said, as our human bodies decline, as they're designed to do, redefining sex that accepts and honors those changes is how we stay sexy and intimate and juicy throughout. So in our final moments, aren't you glad I didn't throw that question out? <laughs> um, in our final mess moments, what is your one tip that you would like to leave people? Something they could do, but they could turn this off and go do um, um, to help their sex life become more resilient. Sheila? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so first of all, I'm just going to just make a comment about the last question that the person had answered, asked, excuse me. Um, another thing you wanna do is think about um, what does sex mean to you? So, um, because a lot of people look at sex strictly as intercourse and that does not have to, if you look at it that way, then yes, sometimes it will be disappointing. Maybe all the time it'll be disappointing. But if you're going on that journey, I'm gonna make this quick. If you're going on that journey from, um, uh, not having uh, a sex life with your husband or your partner, whatever, and you are going on the journey of, I want to start this again, you don't have to really jump into the intercourse. Okay. You, that, that, that should, that does not have to be your end goal. It, it, you never, that actually never has to happen. You can still have great sex and it's not intercourse. So I'm just going to stop there. Your other thing was, uh, <laughs> Yeah, because you know that is kind of my question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, and the other thing, uh, the tip, okay, so the tip to uh, that I would like to leave you with is really think about, um, especially if you have uh, bladder leaks, issues with uh, prolapse, uh, that heaviness, you know, that you have in some, some women have in their pelvic region, uh, really um, think about, maybe boosting that blood flow to the reason, to the region. And how are you gonna do that by stimulation? Okay, so really just continue to um, not ignore that part of the body. Okay, you will go to the gym, you will do some, you know, squats, lunges, bicep curls. Okay, well, hello. We got, we got something here in the middle that should not be neglected. So, uh, and we, I've given you, you know, tips on in the beginning on what to do um, for that not to happen. So that is, that is my tip. Just think of your pelvic region as an extension of the rest of your body that has to be taken care of. Yep. Lisa. Yeah, so I'm gonna weave together a couple of um, thoughts that I've shared. So here's one of many tips, right? Um, is to choose something um, that makes you feel good, that gives you pleasure with one of your senses, one of your, your at least the five physical senses. So choose something. I actually, I think I wrote an article, um, maybe it was in the last issue, come back to your senses. Um, that gives you a, a little bit more of a breakdown um, in Levy, Living Healthy List Magazine, come back to your senses. Um, choose one. And really give, your, give yourself even just a full minute, <laughs> just one minute to experience whether that's that peach or the soft grass or a beautiful sound and experience it consciously with presence and notice how much you can receive. How much pleasure can you receive? How much feel goodness can you receive without judgment just be curious about how much can I receive because you can translate that anywhere else. And then also just notice like where you are on that receiving scale, right? And you can just 
continue to use organic peaches <laughs> or a beautiful piece of music to play with your, your receiving level of pleasure and giving yourself permission to feel good. Great. That's a great tip. Is that right? Because so much of our pleasure is in our minds. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, mine is going to be um, getting to some arts and crafts. And the reason I say that is going back to um, what I said earlier, my post-it note was, you know, creative energy is sexual energy. And a lot of us will say, I'm not creative at all and whatever. And what you're really actually doing is stating the fact that your sexual energy is blocked. When you block your creative energy, you're blocking your sexual energy. So to open that back up, just be creative because that sexual energy that you think is just designed to get you into bed and get you going, that sexual energy is how you decide what to wear in the morning, how you decide to cut your hair, how you set your table, how you landscape your yard. All of that is sexual energy. So if you want to open back up and find the, um, that creative flow that's going to translate more for you and as you resiliently and creatively redefine your sex life to make it work for you where you are and where your body is start doing any kind of creative activity anything that brings you joy from making something out of nothing your creative energy your sexual energy is how you are most godlike the most connected to source the ability to create beauty out of nothing but love. So with that, I wanted to thank all of you all, um, she, Dr. Sheila and Lisa for all your cogent and wise and wonderful um, insights. Check them out on the Living Healthy list, but also they put their information in the chat. If you wanna to talk to them individually about how they might be able to help you revive their, your sex life, all of us are available. Um, if you'd like more of this discussion and have the opportunity to get some more clarity on your own thing, I will be back here um, on duty as the coach on duty on Friday, August 19th, 12 o'clock Central, 1 o'clock um, Eastern Time. We're going to be talking more about how you can connect your spirituality with your sexuality and get things rock and rolling in a way that Linda's going to put you up in the stars. <laughs> so do that. Do know that Sheila will be coming up on September 13th. It's a meaningful conversation, so you won't want to miss her and get a lot more information about um, what's coming for you forward in terms of your body. And then on October 11th, the wonderful Lisa Medley will be um, here for her meaningful conversation about your body and physicality and all that good stuff. So as always, the Living Healthy list is here to provide you with all great information that you have, need, and don't even know that you, you need it yet. <laughs> so again, thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you back very soon. As always, I leave you with your love, and you are loved, so act like you know it.